Welcome back everybody to the ST Must See Comics of the Week. We have a bunch of fun issues today. Not a whole lot of issue ones coming out this week, but a bunch of continuing stuff. Uh, we have the number one Black Adam, uh, as well as some other stuff. Um, the thing that I'm excited about yeah. is after a year of it being delayed, we're finally getting the Predator covers of comics. Oh, nice. Because I don't know what happened. Like Marvel got Alien and Predator rights like last year, and then there was some tie up but we're finally getting the predator variant covers and i ordered all of them nice that's very fun even on comics we don't usually order yeah nice yeah uh so i guess we'll start off with uh jane foster the mighty thor uh versus predator no um so they're gonna be a bunch of these covers that'll have the predator fighting different marvel heroes um the last time there was like with the xenomorphs the avengers were fighting a bunch of them and like they're really cool covers really collectible uh we're gonna get at least five of each some i ordered more of um, but these are really sick covers and mighty thor uh thor did some stuff he's gone missing jane's got the hammer again she's going hunting around it was very detective -y, very she jane mr horse she's what is mr horse there yeah but he is in there mr yeah. horse yeah she is uh, a little bit more of an as guardian than like a human now like she mm -hmm. does the magics and she's not embracing her mighty thor persona throughout the most of this but she's trying to figure out what happened with thor uh cool read but more importantly this is the first predator cover yeah which is sick yeah yeah those predator covers look very cool <coughs> all right moving on to my i got the excellent issue five i'm pretty sure this is the last issue of this run of the excellent but there is a second one uh that is uh guaranteed i guess at the end of this one um i'm not familiar with excellent i think these are technical guys I think these guys are technically X-Men, but I never heard of any of these guys before. Um, but this this comic is a little a little dark, a little gruesome. It reminded me of like the Boys Are Invincible style stuff, where it's the superhero. It's kind of like the the misfit superheroes, um, but people die. Like other heroes die brutally, violently in front of you, like on screen. Um, so yeah, this uh, it was it was an interesting read, not knowing who any of these characters are. Um, uh, coming into issue five, um, but it was still very fun. Uh, the main character is a person called Toodle Pip, who's a British reporter girl. She's got like a superhero blog, and whenever she says Toodle Pip, she teleports. Um, so she says Toodle Pip and then disappears. Um, so that's fun. Uh, like there's some there, there's weird powers in here. Um, like one chick, she's called Mirror Girl, and she just has a mirror of herself that she can just talk to herself. Yeah, so the, the characters in here are weird, their powers are interesting, um, but the story is fun. A um, little dark, a little twisted, a little, little wacky. Um, the Book of Ashanti is a major plot point in here. Oh, I heard about this. So that's fun. Fun little Book of Ashanti, Doctor Strange stuff. Yeah, it was a fun read. My next one is Black Adam number one. Uh, back in black. Uh, so Black Adam's dying. Apparently you can do that being a god. Damn, that's annoying. And, like, it opens up and he's just, like, single-handedly handing Darkseid his ass. Oh, fun. Which is cool. Um, but, Black Adam hunts down one of his descendants and gives him the power of Shazam. So, super cool comic of Black Adam coming to terms with his own mortality, getting somebody this badass, and being like, alright, well, I don't want this power anymore, I can't, I'm gonna die. And passing it along. So the story's gonna take place with uh, Black Adam's descendant being Black Adam, which is cool. Because we have the new Black Adam movie coming out with The Rock. Oh, true. I forgot about that. So we've got some more information if you want to, like, get in on Black Adam. Yeah. It was pretty good. Was, yeah. I mean, he's a very violent, and I like that he's become more of an anti-hero than a villain. Because mm -hmm. Black Adam used to be big villain. Uh, now he's part... Now he's part hero. In some worlds, he's joined the Justice League as a very, like, Batman, Superman type guy, where he's just yeah. like, I'm, I'm the, the justice that people need. But he's also like Deadpool, where he's willing to kill people because he needs to. Yeah, and, means uh, an end's peacemaker type shit. Yeah, from my uh, X Men deep dive, it reminds me of Apocalypse is like a good guy now. Like he's working with the X Men. Yeah. So yeah, similar, similar vibe. But Apocalypse still does his Apocalypse thing sometimes. All right, next up, we've got Dark Crisis Young Justice. This is uh, issue one for this one. Uh, this is still the Dark Crisis, all the um, all the Justice League are dead um, stuff. Uh, picks up on the memorial that uh, Dick, I believe, 
uh, agreed to speak at, and he did speak at it, and this is his speech, and the, uh, the Young Justice crew are, they're all super depressed. They're all like, damn, like, they, it, it gets a little dark real quick with this one. Um, and, then, and then the boys, they disappear. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a mystery to figure out where they've gone to or why they've gone. All the other like kind of more capable heroes are like, yeah, they're just grieving. Don't don't worry about it. But one of the girls is like, no, we need we need to check where they are. Where are they? Like specifically, believe. Superboy. Yes. Like these three. Yeah, these three. Yeah, these three. These three go missing. Like okay. all like the six young justice. The uh, three. These three dudes and then three girls. I'm not sure exactly which one, but I think there's like Wonder Girl and stuff like that. Um, are just hanging out like grieving, and then these three just disappear, and. One of the girls was like, all right, we got to go track him down. We got to find him where the hell they go. They wouldn't just leave like that. And all the, like, Flash is there, and he's like, and Green Lantern's there as well. And they're like, no, they're just grieving. Don't worry about it. And she's like, no, something's fucky. Um, something is wrong. Um, they're in, like, a weird alternate timeline, previous timeline weirdness. Um, but uh, Dick, is, Dick is still being Dick. I'm like, listen, people need saving. I don't care what's happening right now. I need to go save somebody. And... Um, is this, I think this Kid Flash um, is like, no, there's some weird shit. I don't think we need to save anybody here. If we're like, if stuff's going down, like if we're being messed with, are we saving somebody might be the bait. And Dick's like, gotta save him. Don't know what to tell you. So they all, like, he's like, all right, screw it. I can't, can't beat that. So we gotta go. Um, so yeah, some uh, shenanigans ensue after that. I've got next this beautiful Moco cover. Oh, that's cool. Of Captain America Sentinel of Liberty. Um, it, this one takes place with Steve as Captain America. The last one was Falcon. True, yeah. Uh, he's doing a story. Uh, he hasn't heard from Bucky in a while, and he goes kind of like on this mission to f to find him, but also like himself. It's a very like very down to earth story. Um, there are some fights with um, Bucky in here where he's he's dealing with. Peggy trying to figure out who's pulling the strings. There's some little bit of mystery in here. This definitely continues on. Um, but there's some pretty sick fight artworks in here. Um, Captain America being Captain America and just doing Captain America things. And he's talking about how it's like he, he the symbol is, he is not the symbol. It is the symbol of the people. Is, you know, the whole Captain America That's thing. Uh, but yeah, so talking about the symbol of Captain America. Pretty good comic. Uh, pretty interesting stuff with Bucky at the end there. Um, Peggy Carter's young in this, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Yeah. Next up, we've got the final issue of the Sabretooth run. Only five quick issues. Um, pretty easy to pick up and catch up on if you want a uh, little jump into the X-Men. It's a very interesting cover, too. Yeah, the Sabretooth covers are all badass. They're all crazy shit like this. Um, it, they're very interesting. Uh, so Sabretooth in the X-Men stuff, when all the X-Men went to Krakoa and said, all right, all mutants are all mutants are fine. All mutants are good guys now. Everybody can infinite revive as well. Um, Sabretooth murdered somebody, and they were like, "Hey, we have one rule. We have a couple rules, but the biggest one is don't murder humans. We can't piss them off because they'll just come kill us all because they're racist humans. So don't kill any humans. If you kill humans, you go into the, the stasis chamber pit and you never get heard of from again." So Sabretooth killed somebody, went to the stasis cha pit chamber, and never be heard from again. Um, and then apparently, Sabretooth is just so pure will focused on being a badass saber tooth guy that the the void pit of nothingness he turned into his own kingdom with his own might of will and then as other mutants killed people and were sentenced to exile they joined him in his pit kingdom of mind will um and he was still stuck but he he could he wasn't really like imprisoned as per se he was still in the pit um and then eventually a mutant came in that could talk to people outside of the pit so they started recruiting followers <laughs> so now he's out because somebody broke him out um and so uh Sabretooth and all the exiles that have been the, the mutants that have been cast to exiles and the ones that are not cast to exile but have been kind of swayed by um the Ar Sabretooth and their the exiles argument that um Professor X and Magneto and the Quiet Council, who kind of rule over uh, Krakoa right now, are kind of just like dick swinging and don't really know what they're doing, and they're just kind of making it up as they go, and they shouldn't be in charge. Um, and so all the exiles leave Krakoa, and it looks like they're doing a mutiny. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're a mutiny. A mutiny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sabretooth swore revenge <laughs> on Professor X for uh, locking him in the pit, and he can't attack Professor X physically. And even if he could, X Men don't die. 
physically, but their reputations certainly can. And Sabretooth has dealt Professor X a mighty blow. Ah, interesting. Uh, my final comic is Maiden Spider-Man number five. Uh, was it last week? Week before. Week before. Yeah. Uh, number four, Spider-Man went on a rampage and did Tombstone's dirty work for him. Yeah. Like, took out some of the, the villains in Hell's Kitchen and, like, beat up a rival gang. So now all the bad guys think that Spider-Man is working with Tombstone, and that's bad for Tombstone's reputation. Mm -hmm. And Peter has a little heart-to-heart -heart with Black Cat, and she's like, hey, be your witties, like, have fun. Like, that's where, that's the, where you're, you're going to go good. And so he just goes to Tombstone, and he's like, so if all your buddies, you know, think that we're together, that could get you in trouble, right? And then Tombstone's like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. um, so Peter kind of plays the card of like, well, I could tell people that we work together. Something might happen. Yeah. And then, like, there's, um, he goes and he tells the guys that, that he beat up their hideout where one of Tombstone's drug shipments is. And he tells Tombstone, he's like, yeah, um, I, I knew they found out about your drugs, but I didn't know if you wanted me to intervene and, like, make our friendship, like, known. <laughs> So I didn't. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, all right, these are the these are the cards that you're playing, Peter. Yeah. Um. So this it's kind of funny. Um. They kind of feel like they kind of pulled back on the. This is like the end of the last issue was Peter going and he was being that wrecking crew and just like just wiped out right. all of those the, the tombstones competition, and then they just kind of pulled back when he he was like, oh, tombstone used me. Damn. I, I don't know. I, I feel like they yeah. pulled back, like, I, want, I just want to see Darker Spider-Man. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Finishing up this week, we've got the next issue in the Magic Comics. Um, this is picking up from where the last one left off, but this side on this time on the hero side. Um, so the previous issue was Tezzeret making friends with a kind of prism planeswalker mage who doesn't really have any powers of her own but can amplify or turn off the powers of planeswalkers or just mages in general around her. Um, Tezzeret is gone from being everybody's main bitch lackey, which is his uh, TM Tezzeret title, uh, main bitch lackey to everybody. Um, he, I don't know if this story is working alongside the current magic story where he's working under the Phyrexians and he's just kind of doing this on the side, or if this is a separate storyline between Nicol Bolas and Phyrexians, um, him working for them, or if this is after or something like that. I'm not really sure on the exact timeline of when this story takes place, but Tezzeret is, uh, he's his own guy now. He's, he's threatening to use Merit Lodge's power to make himself a pre-mending planeswalker, Ooh. which when it's Tezzeret is not going to be ideal. That's going to be good. Um, yeah. Hazard's gonna have a field day when she gets back to Hama Cat. Let me tell you what. That's, not how, um, that's how that works. Um, not. And so this one uh, is I. They they go and talk to a planeswalker on Ravnica, living in a vampire castle. It's Davro Kane. It's not Sorn. Sorn's <laughs> not there. It's Davro Kane, um, who is a very cool character. Uh, he was brought up in the War of the Spark. Um, set uh he was kind of created for that um brandon sanderson wrote a couple short stories or uh, small novels about the character and he got a card with 20 abilities correct yeah and then he got a card on arena with a million <laughs> abilities uh he is very very cool he makes deals with demons and then outsmarts them and uses them for himself uh he is he's a very very cool character um so he's attacked by the gate watch because they want his help because he's working under tezzeret um and they they just kind of beat him up uh he he, he escapes out because he's very self-preservation and then chandra's like hey davril you can leave, but Garrick here smells you, so we'll find you. And first, I'm going to burn your house down. And he turns around, and he's like, my books. Don't burn my books, please. I'll help you. And she's like, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the, the, it is uh, some very cool story. Uh, the story is mostly told from Davil Kane's perspective. So you get an uh, insight into his, kind of how he navigates the world. Um, very fun, very, he's very quippy, kind of bantery, but mostly to himself. He doesn't talk out loud a whole lot, um, except to, like when he absolutely has to. Um, and he, he has a very cool power set where like the Gatewatch attack him and he doesn't do anything. He just summons a big ass demon and says, get him boy. And then Garrick, uh, who's as big as the demon, because apparently Garrick's like 10 feet tall. Um, it's huge. He's a big boy. Um, fights the big old demon. So that's fun. Um, yeah. Uh, story looks like it is crescendoing in the next few episodes to Tezzeret versus the Gatewatch. Um, and Nico Eris has to sneak under Tezzeret's guise because Tezzeret doesn't know who Nico is. Uh, Tezzeret's on the lookout for all the other Gatewatch, but Nico Eris is new to the playing field of Planeswalkers and he is unaware of her presence. 
their presence. And so they can they can sneak on in and fuck with Tezzeret's plans. <clears throat> All right. Those are the comics that we got in this week, some of the ones that we wanted to show off. If you are interested in any that we showed off here today or any that are still on the wall behind us, feel free to swing by the shop. If you want a subscription to any of the issues here or any issues that are currently coming out, you can go ahead and talk to me or Jordan. We're here. One of us is here every day, uh, and we can set up a subscription for you to get any new comics that are coming in. We can also go back a few issues. It's roughly four or five, depending on the run, uh, to get some of the back issues to get you caught up. For short issues like Sabretooth, uh, we can get you every comic on the thing, and they'll all show up at once. So you can get fully caught up on those stories. For some of the longer ones like Magic, I think we can go probably about to about 15, 13, 12. Yeah, we got them all on the wall. Never mind, we have them all on the wall. So if you want Magic, uh, you want to get caught up on Magic Story. Magic Story we can get you caught up on. Um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, super cheap, super simple, super cheap. Saves you 10% on your comics. Get free bags and boards. Get all your issues coming to you right when you want them, all located in one quick and easy stop. Yep, yeah, and that's it for this week. We'll see you next week, same time. Peace.